Okay, so welcome everyone. I am Carolise, and we're going to be talking today about epics. Epics, epics, epics. Yes, and whether you're using Jira or you're using Azure DevOps, epics are important. The two applications kind of have them slightly different. Um, but in general, we'll talk about what an epic is, regardless of the tool you're using for your user stories and how you use Epic space on those tools. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna stick with Jira and I'm gonna share my screen and show you my Jira. Okay, so here we are in my Jira and I'm on a project which I call front end and the intent of this is mainly for my students to learn about creating front end stories. So this is a project, you can name your project whatever. and let me go to backlog and in this project so far we only have one story right so an epic is different from a story in the sense that the story the user story breaks down a larger body of work into smaller manageable estimatable chunks right you all have studied about user stories you know about the invest if you don't know go look what that is but basically when you have a large thing to create a large thing to build you don't create one enormous story right because it takes so much time it's hard for people to think about it's hard to estimate it's hard to divide and conquer so what we do is we break it down into smaller chunks and we estimate those and together over the time of the sprint or maybe over multiple sprints when you get these small pieces of work done, eventually you'll solve the big problem that you're solving, right? It's like taking a bite at a time at an elephant until you eat the elephant, or not boiling the ocean, but taking a spoon at a time and trying to um, boil that, right? So it's basically how you break things down. So you break them down to user stories, and those user stories form, there, there's something in common between all the user stories. And that thing that's in common would be the epic, right? So the epic is a larger body of work that you then break down to smaller tasks and smaller user stories. So in this example, I am writing user stories around alerts. And I have another video where we talk about how to write user stories. And so I've written a story on alert. In this case, uh, imagine that we're building a backing application and we needed to create the functionality of allowing the bank customer to subscribe to an alert when their balance is low. So what we talked about in that video was how to write the user story. Please go watch that video if you haven't yet. And it gives you an example of how to break it down for your acceptance criteria, how to handle your error states, all of that. I'm not gonna repeat that because you can watch that video for that detail. But what I want to show you is that here we have a link to the epic that this belongs to. So if I go back to my backlog view, I can see that there is a name right here. And this actually is the epic that this story belongs to. And if I were to click on it, I can unlink it. Or if I click on the story and I click on this uh, link right here, it will take me to the actual epic and if I click on it again it opens it up in its own tab so now I can see here's my epic and these are the stories that belong in this case I only have one so let's play this back okay let's start from scratch let's say I'm on my board and I want to create an epic the first way you can create an epic is by going to this create button here and it will show you this model and on the issue type you'll change it from being a story which is a default to be an epic which is denoted by this purple icon right here the required field is the name so let's call this epic um let's find a good name for this one contacts right let's call this contacts so maybe all the stories in this epic will be relating to the contacts functionality right so we call this contacts and it's going to automatically populate me as the reporter because i'm creating it and then I can always go here and click create and that would have created my contact epic. <clears throat> right. So now Gio will tell me, hey, you know, um, changes are saved, but issues is invisible. You can go to view issue. 
and it shows me, hey, you have this epic. Um, well, this doesn't look like an epic. It looks like a story. That's weird. Hmm. Must have done it wrong. Let's go back to my backlog. Oh, you know what? I created a, a, a story, not an epic. I didn't change it properly. Oh, man. So here's what we can do. With something like this, this is a great training, by the way. If you created a story when you intended to create an epic, you can go here and go to move. So you go to the three dots, you go to move. And then you have to move it out of being a story to move it into being an epic. So you click on epic and then you go to next. And now it's going to update everything to make it an epic. Click on next. And there you go. So now it says it's going to move it from this project and make it the target issue type epic. Do you want to confirm? I confirm. It migrates the issue. Normally it shows you this migrating for quite a bit, although it shouldn't take that long. But once it's done, it's only one issue. Then it says acknowledge. You can acknowledge or you can just, you know, click away. It's fine. So now your story that was a user story has been converted to an epic and it has epic number FE3. See what I mean? You can play this back to see how I did that. Now it automatically gives it a color. And this is the color that will show in the backlog to represent the epic. It's very useful to identify epics, but I don't want to keep that color. So you just click on the color bar and you can change it to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and make it blue. So uh, Jira only has these colors. It's not a lot, but it's enough to not go crazy with the colors, <laughs> but still be able to differentiate the epics in the, in the backlog. So there we go. We changed it. And that's one way that you can create your epic. So if you already have an epic, you can assign an epic, and you don't have to go to the Create button all the time to create more epics because you already have an epic. <clears throat> so now we have this epic called notification preferences and I want to add another epic to this story because this story has to do with contacts. Then I just choose the contact epic there. Now what this does is it helps you to see in the backlog all the items that you need to work on. If you want to say, I want to see everything related to just the feature of contacts. Then you can also do that, which is the great thing about the Epic. It's a grouping. It's a way to organize. It's a way to put stories that are related in some way together. Now, a story in Jira can only be associated with only one Epic. So you can't have one story that deals with both contacts and preferences. So you have a story spread between those two Epics. That does not work. A story belongs to one and only one Epic at a time. So you can move stories from one epic to the next, but you it, it can't be on both epics at the same time. So if you go to the story, now Jira shows you a great little sidebar here, and you can click on the link that has the purple icon, and you can get to the epic that is the parent of this child user story. And when you get there, uh, if you click on it again, it'll open into a new tab. I like to open it in a new tab so I can see all of it. And now you have your epic and you can add details to the epic in the description. Now, what do we normally add to an epic level story? It's not going to be a user story. As a user, I want this so I can have that. That would be a part of the individual stories that are making up this epic. At the epic level, you talk about the feature itself. What does it do? When does it get started and in initiated? What documents does it require? Um, any particular details about it? Any process flows that goes over the whole feature? Any any detail that you think is relevant at a feature level, like at the at the higher level, not in the individual stories, but overall, right? So this, if you're talking about contacts overall, we will be using we'll be importing contacts from Outlook, and we'll allow the user to create their own contacts. When a contact is created, we'll upload this to Salesforce automatically via our APIs, and we will allow the user to manage the contacts from a user interface. Here's a flowchart that shows how the users 
are able to pull in contacts, manipulate contacts, delete contacts, uh, and export these contacts to some other system via some other API, right? Something like that. So you talk about it at the higher level when you're documenting at the epic level. So here's an example of that kind of documentation. So if I go back to the notification preferences, um, let's open the story and let's go back by clicking on the epic. And it's here, all of it's here, but it's hard to read. So you can click on it again to open in a new tab and get all of that good real estate. So in this example, we just gave a little simple summary of what this feature does. And then we have some scope about the feature. Well, we're going to only allow certain alerts. Here's the Figma design that goes alongside the alerts. Um, you know, what makes it eligible to choose this alert? All of these behavior and things that go across all of the feature we'll put it at the detail of the epic and then when we're doing each individual story so now we're doing a story here called low balance alert where we're focusing only on the low balance triggering this alert now you can put additional detail about each individual story that together when it's all built will accomplish the feature so epic is very important to group things to bucket things to be able to look at something as you know all of these things are related to this one area of what we're building and we call that a an epic now in in azure devops you have the concept of a feature the concept of an epic and of course the pbis which can get confusing right if you're exposed to both but in the azure devops world the epic is at the largest level and then that breaks down into features which then breaks down the product backlog items which is the same as user stories so you could have a big argument as to whether a feature is the same as an epic and which one is at a higher level. In Jira, we don't have the concept of features. We don't. So we just have an epic, which serves both purposes. It's at the higher level, highest level. It buckets everything that's below it, right? And you normally name them and categorize them by, by something they have in common. And it's enough, right? You don't need to get another issue type called a uh, feature to do that in jira epic is it epic is at the highest level and everything else is either a story or a task or a subtask so they all boil up to this epic and it works it works so far so i don't know if we need to change it so i hope this discussion was helpful for you to understand about epics again epic is like a bucketing um it's a holding space it's a label that you give to to everything that's related to that one feature, right? You can think of it as a feature. You can add these epics in Jira in multiple ways. You can open the story and up here you'll have a link that says add epic, right? Let's go back. Um, so I create a new story here. I'm gonna call this new story just because I can't think of a good name right now. And then when you open this new story, you'll see add epic. So you add an epic from here, you choose one that's already been created. And once you choose it, it assigns this user story to that epic. If you don't have the epic that you're looking for, you go to create, you create an epic this way. You put your name, you assign a color, and that's it. And now when you're looking at your backlog, you can see multiple stories. I'm gonna close this. Multiple stories and the epics they all belong to. Imagine this was, 10, 15, 20 stories, and each of them have a different epic with a different color, you can see what's related and what's not related very easily when you have that kind of labeling, right? So that's what the epic does, helps you to pick out what's important from a higher categorization level and help you to see that in the backlog. Um, if you wanna see everything that needs to be done for a particular feature, you just need to go to that epic. And when you go to the epic, it will list out for you all the user stories that are related to that epic. I think I just changed something. <laughs> be careful because you might be trying to add an epic like I was, and then you end up changing an epic and that can cause a lot of confusion too. So just gotta watch out for it. It's so easy to do things in Jira and also easy to make a mess of it too. So it goes both ways. So now here we are. If you wanna see the contacts epic, for example, you can look at it and then it would have listed out all of the stories that are related so it says child issues in this case we only have one 
and that would be uh, the add contacts. If you added more stories around contacts, you add it to that, that, that epic, and then it will list them all out for you. And even show you the progress if they're getting ready to be done or if they're all in to-do state, all of that is gonna be visible from Jira. So Jira is pretty good with helping you manage your epic. Um, you can use epics in your reports and your filters. You can create dashboard based on Epic. It's pretty helpful. So there you have it, guys. There you have how to create an Epic in Jira. I hope this little chat was helpful. I hope you're learning something. And please check out my website, carolise.com. Join me for my insightful live sessions where I walk through a real world case study or a real world project and show you the business analysis that was done to make those projects successful. Or if it's a case study from an interview, then we walk through the business analysis required so that you can present this in the interview and land the job. All right, so you're gonna learn a lot when you join my insightful um, live session. So go to my website, the link is below this video. Sign up for this. You're going to learn a lot. It's gonna be worth every penny. So sign up. <laughs> Come with me and let's learn together and grow our business analyst careers together. I look forward to seeing you in the next insightful event. Thank you so much and take care.